Starship 11 is about to launch, and in doing so, closing out the current test phase of the program before aiming for higher goals. We'll talk about that. More images of SpaceX's XL Dragon capsule have been released. The heavy Starlink launch cadence breaks another reuse record. And NASA's space launch system is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. We left off last Friday in anticipation for Starship SN11's first static fire, but it wasn't until Monday when that attempt came, aborting just after ignition for unknown reasons. And although at this time we still don't have a firm date for a reattempt, the FAA did approve of SN11's 10 click flight when no public safety concerns were raised after SN10's belayed rud. Temporary flight restrictions were in place for a launch this weekend, but were removed last night. Again, they'll first have to knock out that static burn. After Eleven completes its mission, SpaceX will be moving on to the next phase of their Starship development plan. NASA's Spaceflight was able to get their mitts on some exclusive SpaceX documents and shared with us what they learned. First, following SN11's flight, the company will move on to testing the first super heavy booster that Starship will ride upon to orbit, BN1, which was fully stacked on Thursday afternoon. But let it be known that this prototype will not fly. It is only a production pathfinder so that SpaceX can figure out how to build and transport a 70 meter tall stage. The next booster that is currently being built will fly. Last we heard, much like SN4 and 5 did, but with two engines. Plans may have changed since though. However, before that, but after BN1, SpaceX will head back to Starship testing with SN15. Remember, SN12 through 14 were scrapped because, well, that's how fast technology changes when you're operating on the forefront of innovation. So SN15 will begin a new series of tests for Starship that will include some significant but unspecified changes to the vehicles themselves. SN17 will end the phase, much like how SN6 and 11 ended the previous ones. Nothing was mentioned of 18 and 19, so they may be acting as stand-ins or buffers in case something goes wrong. Or maybe they'll be scrapped early in development as well. About the time this new phase is ending, BN2 should be taking to the skies for the first booster flight. Then it's on to Booster 3, with Starship SN20 included on top for the first orbital test flight of a fully stacked Starship Super Heavy rocket. And SpaceX is targeting July 1st for this epic launch. So the orbital launch tower will have to be built by then, since only that will be tall enough to hoist one on top of the other. But before SpaceX takes the Super Heavy booster anywhere, the FAA has to finish its environmental assessment of the situation. We last spoke about this months ago, and at the time the government agency was looking for public input for the environmental threat these giant boom sticks pose to Boca Chica's flora and fauna. Well, they got that input, all 321 comments of it, and released a draft summary report this week. Now they are taking comments on their summary of the comments before moving on to the next step of the EA process. If you have any comments to make concerning the comments they received, leave a comment below and someone will probably comment on it. Ironically, it is this very environmental assessment that was the final nail in the coffin for a recent bid SpaceX made in their attempt to win a NASA contract to launch a small handful of CubeSats called Tropics. It's been confirmed that the company went with the overkill option by offering up a future Starship rocket to deliver these tiny spacecraft, probably to show everyone how cheap their 100% reusable rocket is, or will be. But the win ultimately went to smaller launch service provider, Astra. SpaceX, quote, did not clearly demonstrate progress toward the resolution of the EA, which results in risk associated with obtaining an FAA launch license, increasing the likelihood of delays that would affect contract performance. But some good news is that if you signed up to orbit around the moon on Starship in 2023, full free, then be sure to check your emails because this week Dear Moon sent out forms to applicants that need to be filled out if you wish to continue with the selection process. It includes not one, but two 300 word essays that I easily answered with a simple yes or no. Good luck following that. <laughs> In other quick news, NASA has released new images of SpaceX's XL Dragon capsule that may or may not be under development at the moment. In the future, the spacecraft will launch atop a Falcon Heavy rocket to resupply the Lunar Gateway space station. We're, we're gonna move on to Starlink news now, okay? On Sunday, SpaceX launched yet another batch of 60 Starlink satellites, this time on a booster's record-setting ninth flight. And as an added bonus, its drone ship landing was successful, which means she'll get the chance to fly again in the near future. How near? Well, rumor is SpaceX may attempt to achieve their original goal of 10 flights for a single booster in April. Will this booster be the one to achieve it? I do not know. But what I don't do not know is that SpaceX has gotten so good at lighting up these toasty boomsticks that they've created their first ever booster backlog down at the port. Greg Scott was on scene in a helicopter to report on the traffic jam. 
So many Starlink satellites are coming online that those of you in Germany, the UK, and New Zealand will be receiving coverage, or expanded coverage if you already have it, in the coming weeks. Hold on. And yet another Starlink mission is scheduled for March 23rd, and the best part is, it's not a third shift launch, so I will be here to watch this one live with you. And finally, SpaceX and NASA have signed a joint space flight safety agreement to formalize their interests in sharing information to maintain and improve space safety. Basically, it just means they are working together to make sure no Starlink satellites pinball it into spacecraft NASA cares about. If their vessels are on a collision path, this agreement states that SpaceX's Starlink satellites will use their autonomous onboard maneuvering capabilities to adjust course, and in return, NASA's spacecraft will do nothing. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Thursday, NASA fired up their SLS rocket's core booster for its second static fire. And all personnel, we've got engine start and we're for the plus count. All personnel, please continue to monitor your system and grasp is in control. If you remember back to January, their first attempt ended with an early shutdown due to a gambling issue with the RS-25 engines, same engines used on the space shuttle. But this time, the space agency was hoping for four solid minutes of burn time data, but ended up getting the full duration of over eight minutes with a successful locks out shutdown to top it off. The space launch system is a super heavy lift vehicle that NASA is developing for their Artemis program. Designed to carry the Orion capsule to the lunar gateway with astronauts on board, maybe within the decade, Without Jim around to remind us people will walk on the moon again by 2024, who really knows what's going on anymore? Um, and as far as uh, finishing up uh, what we have left to do, so we'll be re doing our refurbishments, um, we'll be reviewing data, and then we'll do our break of configuration. And then we have uh, about mid-April is what we're targeting right now to do uh, shipping our um, core state over on the barge to uh, KSC. And so by the end of April, we're looking at arriving at KSC. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Shout out to my eccentric members and patrons for their support of the channel. Thanks, fam. If you want more SpaceX news in your week, join us by signing up using the links in the description below this video. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.